Hi, my name is Carl Grace. This is my friend Jen, and we're down here at the Nomen. Today we're going to start a color realistic piece, our leg. It's going to be about 40 or 50 different colors laid out. I'm going to go over some techniques on how I, how I blend my different coloring and contrast from warms to cools. And I think that you're going to learn a lot from this video. So pay attention and let's get started. Okay, so this is today's reference. We got a really nice, colorful wild lily. And I came through and I photoshopped a nice little bud. Um, I thought it was enough. I'm probably gonna do a little something right here as far as maybe just a, maybe just a, like a couple vines. I don't know, I'll just, I'll probably just freehand it on her, on her leg. But um, the girl, we're probably gonna come through with some kind of color tone or whatever, but we'll go over that later. I'm going to start with my stencil. I'm going to go ahead and stencil that out right now and uh, get busy. So this is our color copy, downsized to, to fit the area. So once again, I'm just going to tape it on top of the Thermofax paper. I already taken the little protective sheet out. It's a brand new one. I like to use brand new ones when I'm doing uh, big pieces like this. Tape it so it doesn't move. I'm going to start stenciling this up. I'm going to come through and I'm just going to start with the, f the whole outline of the, of the flower. I'm going to do it nice and bold lined. And I, I'm pressing pretty hard so that way these lines will, will stay on the skin for a while. Again, I'm kind of just uh, coming through and I'm going to go ahead and shade this whole piece. Being that we're in color, I'm not going to try to like shade different tones or anything. All I'm going to do is I'm going to come through and treat it like if it's a black and gray image. I'm going to outline it. I'm going to shade it with the dark areas. The dark areas are going to be dark. The light areas are going to get a little bit of light shading. And then as I'm doing the tattoo, I need to make the appropriate changes as far as the color goes. So this line right here, a little bit of shadow coming off right here. I really like the shadows that are on this, this petal right here. They're going to get a lot of good depth. So this is going to get a lot of black right here, nice and dark, kind of just accent. 
Give it that shadow. See how that's looking so far. Yeah, we're definitely getting some, getting some depth. A lot more than just a bunch of lines or some broken dots or lines like a lot of people use. It's a lot more legible, a lot easier to follow. It just works a lot, a lot better for me. A little bit of directions coming through there. Again, I'm just doing this like a quick sketch. So, on the areas that are dark, I'm pressing hard. I'm tightening up and just kind of spinning a little more area, just make it darker. And the other areas where I just want some direction, I'm just barely just gliding this pen over it. As if I was doing some really light gray wash or just a quick sketch with the pencil. Let's go over that. Let's see what it looks like. Well, I think that's going to do it. Let's start pushing her in. So I'm just coming through and I'm just hitting all my black areas. It's good. That, this is definitely a super high contrast piece. A lot of shadows. It's going to look really nice when it's on the skin. It's going to give it a lot of depth. That's totally how I tattoo. So I'm just coming through and just really spell, pushing really hard without breaking the paper, of course, and getting all my dark areas and then kind of just shading in my lights and when it's on the skin which I'm going to show you in about 10 minutes it's going to be really nice easy to follow and I think uh, it, you know part of tattooing as far as you know being able to concentrate on the tattoo is not having to concentrate on everything else you're sitting here and you're trying to read your stencil on, and you're getting lost and trying to figure out what the hell is this what what, what does this line mean and you're constantly checking your reference next to you which how I it's, and that's how I used to tattoo and it's tough you know it's, it's tough to sit there and get lost and spend spend 20 minutes looking back and forth trying to figure out what you're doing and if you you know god forbid you make a mistake and then you got to come through and try to fix it and it's just easier to spend the extra 20 minutes before the tattoo, get acquainted with the piece, spend a little of the time, get a little hand memory, you know, remembrance of, you know, this quick stencil that you're doing, this sketch, and you go from there. So I know it looks like I just did the, the same thing all the way through this cheek, but which is pressing a little differently as far as pressure. You see, it's you know I got my darks right here and my lights right there. It's gonna be really nice to read when it's on the skin.
So I know this whole thing looks like it's solid black, but you check the reference right here and there's actually a little bit of different tones changing in between there. So I just quickly checked it and gave it a little bit of clarity. Kind of like a pedal right here. I'm not going to take this black all the way down, so I'm just going to fade it off and. I'm probably gonna have something coming through right here, maybe some some uh, some vines or something. But so there it is. It took about 20 minutes to do, and uh, you know I just quickly sh sketched over it. This is our reference. It looks like a quick sketch. It's really visible, really legible, and I think it's gonna you know work fairly well for this tattoo. So let's do it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and set up our machines for today. I got three machines laid out. Uh, laid out, it's a one's a liner, one's a soft hitting shader, and one's a color packer. So we're gonna be using a, another five for the liner. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing I usually do. I'm gonna grab it, I'm gonna bend it down right at the eye hole. Should give it a little bit of bow so that way it runs in the bottom of the tube there it is. I got a hard hard hitting nipple it's nice and solid hard plastic I like to run these on my liners and my solid film machines. They just uh, hit a little bit harder. I'll set my throw about right there. Tighten it up. Two rubber bands. This machine set up. Next machine we're running is going to be a 9 mag. <clears throat> the needle that I'm using is actually a bug pin. So, again, bug pin needles are a little thinner. The diameter is about a, a third smaller than a normal needle. So, in a 9 mag, I'm actually, 9 mag 2, I'm actually using an 11 mag needle. But it's a bug pin. Again, slight bend by the eye hole. Slight bend down as it has it's going through. It's just going right on the bottom of the tube instead of jumping up. It just stays right there. Get a nice flow of ink going through it. Really helpful. I'm going to do, be, be doing most of my uh, shading with this. And I like to layer my colors as I'm going. So I'm going to use the really soft, squishy nipple. To go on top of the post that way uh, I can make a little bit more passes on the skin it takes a little bit more time but get a lot more fluid uh, consistent blends with your colors set my throw set up third machine we are using a 15 mag we're also gonna be using a bug pin with this so this is a 17 bug pin going into a 15 magnum tube we're gonna be doing a, a lot of like the big wide areas a lot of the darks and 
maybe some backgrounds with this machine. So I got it. I got it set up to hit fairly hard, not too hard, but just you know to get in there and get out real quick. And again, on this one, we're going to be using a, one of the harder rubber nipples. And there they are. We got a five needle liner for our lines and our tight areas. An eleven uh, or a nine mag with an eleven bug pin for our, for our color, and a fifteen with a seventeen bug pin for our wide areas. And uh, we're ready to go. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start setting up my color palette now. Uh, it's a really colorful piece, a lot of different tones, a lot of different colors. So my theory as far as, as ink is it's cheap. So I set up every color that I possibly need and, and some. That way if I need it and I look, it's there. Because I don't like starting a tattoo and then, you know, an hour into it looking for a color and having to yell for my apprentice or stop and take my gloves off and re-glove and it just, it just stops the flow. So I got about 30 something colors going into this tattoo. We're going to go ahead and start setting up right now for them. This is just some A and D ointment. Some people use those little, can, uh, little, you know, plastic things that hold these caps in there. But I don't like using them because, you know, I I make messes sometimes, and I just don't feel like they're really that sanitary. Unless you want to autoclave them every time. I don't really have a method as far as how I set my caps up when I have this many colors out, but I do have a method as far as how I set my colors up, and I'll go through that right now. So I always start with my, my black. There's a decent amount of black in this, so I'm going to set up with two caps. Okay. Now I'm going to start coming through with my, my reds. So my first cap is going to be a, a plum, which is almost going to look like it's black, but it's not. Next will be a dark red. followed by a dark magenta. Now a light magenta. You'll notice all these brands are different. I don't have one brand that I buy from. I buy from probably five different brands. And I, that's just over the years of finding inks that I really like. This is a bubblegum pink. This 
This is a light pink. And this is some Georgia peach. So I think as you can see, it, you, you know, you, you're definitely getting some <clears throat> some darks to lights as far as you still got the same warm tones, but you know, this, this actually look, comes in a little bit lighter than his looks, so this is actually a higher value color. Now I'm gonna come through with some, my oranges. Start with some brown. Into some light brown. This is a burnt orange color. Going to some regular orange. It's a really bright color right here. Next we got some some butterscotch, which is like a, a muted yellowish brown. I like it. Going into some golden yellow. Now we have a, a regular yellow. And we got this mustard color, which I like for some, it's really useful for some off tones where you don't want them too bright. Kind of like back here, if you can see it. these areas right here, it's gonna get a lot of mustard in there. And next we got some purples. So here's a purple concentrate. Going into a nice high valued straight purple. Now we got a light purple. Throw a cap of dark flesh right here. Really blends well with that purple. Complements it really well. That and the Georgia peach. Now I'm gonna come through with some greens. This is a dark green. which hasn't been opened yet. This is a color called Dirty Money. Pretty new, I like it. It's like a really off tone. Almost like a green periwinkle. I like it. Here we got some lime green. And we got some artichoke flavored green. 
which is really thick. All right, now we're going to come through with our blues. This is our deep blue. Followed by a turquoise blue. This is uh, kind of like a, a deeper sky blue. And then we have an icy blue. Periwinkle blue, and we have a cap of seafoam green, which really sits well with these blue palettes. It really looks nice. So I got two more warm colors I need to introduce. This is a really bright flamingo pink, which is going to be used a lot in this flower. For some of the vibrant areas. And this is a tangerine, which is also a nice bright off color, as you can see. And the, the last three caps, we're going to set up some white. Two of them will probably be used for, you know, muting down different colors, and one will be used for our white at the end. So there's our palette. We got our reds going down to our pinks into some tangerine, which I'll be using for a lot of colors. And we have our oranges going from our dark brown to our light brown all the way down to our yellows. And we have our purples, which is a three palette system, dark, medium, light. Greens, we have four of them. And then our blues, we have, you know, we have about six different colors because we're going to be using those for the face. And I feel pretty comfortable with this palette. I think the, I think every color of this piece will be able to you know, be found and, and made with this 34 colors. So what I like to do when I'm when I'm setting up these many colors and I know my inks, so I know which ones dry up in the caps fast and I know which ones don't, is I'll come through and I'll just give it a, a, a one drop of witch hazel and it'll kind of keep that top from, from uh, hardening up. As you can see, like this one's already starting to, you see the bubbles and uh, Otherwise, you're always playing, pulling that top layer off and, you know, throwing it away and stuff. So I'm going to come through and I'm just going to drop a drop into the ones that need it. Like this plum does. This red does. This dark magenta does. This, uh, Georgia peach definitely does. It's pink. Mm, dark brown. Really, it, it, most of them are uh, the different companies that make them. Some of them, uh, you know, some one of the one of the companies I buy from, I've had caps out there for eight hours and they never dry up. And some companies, they're out there for 15 minutes and they're hard as a rock. So, that one, but the concentrates usually dry up pretty fast. This one definitely does. And um, so that'll just kind of keep that top layer, you know, moist without hardening up and which will be helpful when we're getting back in there because I might not hit I might not hit this cap for two hours. I might get right in there first thing off, so that'll help me out. All right, so now we're gonna place the stencil on. I'm gonna go ahead and start with a, a slight shave. I know she, uh, you know, she's not gonna have much hair there, but procedure is procedure. That's what I do. So I'm just gonna shave the area, make sure there's no hairs. Get her nice and clean.
Now I'm going to wipe her down with some hand sanitizer. Clean the skin a little bit. Kill anything that's on there. You know, a lot of people just use green soap, and I used to do that, and I don't feel like it, uh, you know, really sanitizes the area as much as it should. So I just use hand sanitizer. I wipe it down, let it dry off, and now we have a clean, sterile area for our stencil. So this is our stencil right here. I'm going to go ahead and cut it out real quick. I'm going to give it a couple little cuts on the corners, again, just to help it fold around the skin. Skin's not flat, paper is. All right, so I'm gonna shake up my stencil stuff. Put on a nice thin layer. Apply it all over the skin. I don't wanna put too much on, I just kinda wanna make it so it's kind of sticky. And if it's not, I just keep rubbing it in until it is. My gloves are sticking. That's good. So the stencil is going right there. I'm going to go right down the middle. Make sure I get a nice, even stencil all nice and smooth from the middle and I'm just going to come through and hit my sides bam just like that see how the paper is starting to kind of get a little you know wrinkled here and there those cuts in the paper really help you can see all through the edge right here it's kind of wrinkled but our stencil isn't and that's because of the cuts that we put in there. So now I'm just going to wet this paper up a little bit and kind of give it a, a thin little wipe down with it. Anything that wasn't touching the skin before is now. I'm not soaking it, I'm just giving it a quick pass with a wet paper towel. Alright, that should be good. Pull it back so I don't rip it in case it wasn't the right area or the right direction. And there's our stencil. Nice and legible, clear. I know exactly where my darks are know exactly where my lights are going really easy to read and I, I think it's really helpful as far as tattooing goes to be able to concentrate on tattooing instead of concentrating on what this is or what this is it's there so we're gonna let that dry for about 10 minutes and then we're gonna get started okay now we got the stencil and 
drew on a little bit of underground leafage, we can go ahead and get started. So I'm coming through right here with some uh, blue concentrate. And I'm just going to start magging in these leaves. I definitely want, don't want to run any lines down here because I want to keep the focus on the flower. So we're just going to be magging in our shapes, keeping it nice and kind of blurry. Still focused, but not too much. That way, you know, it gives it the depth that it's, you know, kind of like a photograph. You want the flower to be really focused and you want the background kind of be unfocused and, you know, nice and dark. So we're just coming through with our 15 mag right now. And we're just going to start brushing in some blue concentrate. Still coming through with the blue concentrate. Definitely don't want to get in here with too much black. I, I want this piece, you know, it's, it's going on a woman. So, you know, I, I definitely... Uh, not going, not trying to go too dark with with the blacks. I want to, you know, I'd rather use some dark concentrates and, and keep it nice and colorful and vibrant. If I was doing it on a guy, I would definitely come in with more black to keep the the piece looking more masculine. But uh, you know, it, it it really all depends on what image and what what kind of look you're trying to go with. Just trying to really just trying to mag in those shapes right now, getting that that background cast shadow. Our rinsing off our, our dark blue. We're coming in with our uh, our medium blue. As I'm doing these colors, I'm coming through and I'm I'm fully saturating the piece. You know, get making sure it's it's solid all the way through. And then at the very edge, I'm just kind of loosening up about thirty percent. And as I'm coming in with the next color, I'm, get, I'm getting right over that 30% and fully saturating. That way you get that smooth blend. You're not, you're not going to see any dots or any, any holidays throughout the piece. You're just going to see, like, as for, for instance, here we're going with the dark blue, fading it off into a, a medium blue. And then as I'm fading that one off, I'm coming through with the sky blue. And I'm just, just brushing that right over that 30% and making it a nice, smooth, you know, transition from dark to light. And this is, this is the way... That I, that I do color, you know, it's it's a I fully saturate my pieces and I layer everything. So there's our our background tones for that part behind the leaf, and now we're gonna come through and start magging in the other side. You know, I'm using a lot of the corner of the mag, just getting in there, kind of like. Mag it in my shapes almost like a liner would, but but you know, like I said, I don't want I don't want too much, you know, emphasis on the on the background of this of this flower. These leaves that I just drew on, they're just more of a you know just an image behind it so the piece isn't so flat. Still using the 15 mag here. Just getting in there with those tiny little areas, you know, using the the two on the corner right there, just turn it on its side. I'm running my machine at a nice medium pace, around six volts right now. You know, I could run it all the way down to a five or all the way up to a seven. So I'm just about halfway through right now. As for my inks, you notice sometimes, I, you know, I just dip right into the cap and other times I'm dipping into the cap and into the rinse cup right after. It really all depends on, you know, what type of ink you're using. You know, I use a, a wide variety of different, uh, you know, tattoo inks from different companies. And I've just found that one company doesn't have all the exact uh, tones or consistency I like. You know, I use two from some companies, three from others, and and just from there. So, you know, it all really depends on what type of ink that you're using and what you know how you like it. Sometimes I go straight from the ink cap to the skin, and sometimes I go straight from the ink cap into some water, and then or witch hazel, and then right into the skin after that. So I'm just brushing in those dark blues right here, just you know, trying to get some uh, nice under shadow, so so you know, the flower and leaf doesn't just look blank. You know, I'm just, I'm just blending that off, and of course I'm gonna I'm gonna blend those off into a, a lighter tones and 
which is the reason why we're not running any lines down here. It's just going to fade off into nothing. Rinsing off my blue again, coming into it with the next tone, a medium blue. I'm just getting right over that 30% where I just got loose and, and you know, fully saturating the piece with that tone now. See how smooth we're getting that, that transition from that dark to that mid. And then from there, I'll just loosen up and get into the, that light blue and, and work our way off. Definitely can see the shape of the leaves and, and the stem already just from Maggot in the background. And that's what we're going for right here. All right, so I, I think I'm going to do a little bit of flow right here. I, I, you know, I'm constantly talking about flow. I, I like to keep my pieces moving. I don't, of course, you know, I can't talk everybody into letting me do my thing with it. But, you know, I'm, I'm, of course, today I can. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and add, add some little direction to this instead of just fading off by some, some leaves. You know, there's really nothing, like, really intricate about it. I'm just... Trying to keep the flow that I've, I've drew on with the pen, you know, I got the the direction how it, how it goes up top around the head and, and stuff like that. So I'm just coming through with the with that mid blue and just you know making in a little bit of uh, you know like direction lines coming through and I and I'll just get over those with that that light blue and and really blend them off into the skin. I think it'll look a lot better. Uh, you can see the, the the smooth transition from the darks to the mediums to the lights already on the under part of the leaves. Look, it's looking really nice and no dots at all. You can definitely see the, the leaves in the stem just by shading in all the background areas already. And this is what I was talking about when I'm getting over that 30%. You know, I've, I, I, I went through with that medium blue and... You know, the parts, some of the parts of the piece are already saturated and just at the edge where I'm going to introduce the next color, I'm just barely brushing over. If, like, if it was a gray wash, it'd be like a nice, a nice mid-tone coming off and then you just get right back over that with the next color and, and it really works well. So here we're coming through with uh, some, some of that light blue into the icy blue that, uh, that I have and just introducing a, a little lighter of a tone just for the edge. Trying to get some of that flow going from the bottom, blending it off into nothing. You know, some of the lighter valued colors like these and, you know, yellows and, and you know, uh, seafoam greens and things like that. They, you know, they, they don't get in right on the first pass, but, you know, a lot of times you won't see the, the piece because of the blood that comes off. And so I don't suggest, you know, overworking the the skin in a certain area I'd say two or three passes and then give it give it five or ten minutes and a lot of and I say that in a lot of my tattooing you know don't don't think that you need to see immediate results because a lot of times you don't a lot of times you need to get in there and you know know that you put the ink in and then move on to the next area and give it you know five or ten minutes I mean if five or ten minutes really isn't gonna hurt your client as far as pain goes you know to get back in it you give it an hour or two and you get back in there yeah it's gonna be really sore but Five or ten minutes, you look, if it needs a little, if it has a little holiday or, or something, it needs one more pass or something, you get back in there. But it's always better to give it a minute and let, you know, the skin kind of relax from what it's going through and, and show what's been put in. Then to overwork the area and, and, you know, have scarring and because, you know, if you if you scar the piece of it, it definitely isn't, you're not going to see any of the ink. It's going to be white and it's going to look like ass. So I'm coming through right here with some solid blacks just to get some really deep shadows coming off the, the stem and the leaves. Normally I come through with my, my darkest tones first, like my blacks or my concentrates. If I had a lighter valued uh, color, like, like a really light, you know, a green or a yellow, then I'd be really careful wiping it down because I could definitely mud up my inks. Mudding up meaning, you know, coming through with a, a deeper valued color and wiping over it. But I'm just being really careful not to wipe the black into too much of the blue. That way we don't, you know, mud up that, uh, that ink. I'm using a lot of A&D, which kind of holds it into its area. I'm just building up a really, really dark shadow. Like I said, I want this, 
I want the background to be nice and dark. You know, I'm, I'm starting to starting to see a, a little bit of shadowing and, and things like that. So coming through with the, the green concentrate right now. Keeping it really, you know, nice and saturated. Coming through with about that 30% of that black that I loosened up and getting right back over that with that dark green. I'm just magging in that line right there. Just, uh, you know, like I said, just, just kind of turning my mag on the side and, and, and you know, building up where the where the center of that leaf will flow with and you're just coming through with that concentrate also same same green just working in my darks right here getting ready to introduce my my lighter tones after Go ahead and give it a nice wipe down so we can see what we're doing right now. And already we're starting to look really nice. Get some really nice uh, under shadows. Coming through with the nine now. Still building up that green concentrate right there. Keep in mind, as you're doing colors, you know, I, I definitely recommend coming through with your darker, uh, you know, higher valued uh, colors first. And then at the end, bringing in your, your lighter valued, you know, uh, brighter colors. You know, as you're doing that, and until you introduce those warmer colors or those brighter colors, you know, it's always going to look really, really dark. I'm coming through right here with just a little bit more black just to give it a little more shadow on that leaf. And, you, you know, it's just, it's the same thing as in any other tattoo. It, you're just, you're just building your layers, you know. You got to start with your darks and you got to keep working your way in, from, from darkest to lightest. So, until we introduce those other colors, it's, it's going to look nice and dark, which is what we want. But notice how I kept the, you know, those areas clean where, where we're going to introduce those lighter colors. And once you do that, it, it'll really lighten up the piece right there and, Coming through with a with a lime green right over that green concentrate right now, getting over that thirty percent that we left open. Really gonna brighten it up now, as you can see. There it is, right there. Still using the nine mag because it's a smaller area. And already, just just off that that first pass right there, it's it, you know the leaves already. You can you can start to see a lot more a lot more brighter colors. Still not too bright because of all the, the concentrate and the black that we put in, but just enough that, you know, you're definitely seeing a, a little bit of, of light source hitting the leaf and that part of the stem, and that's what we're going for. Making sure to wipe, uh, wash and wipe my, uh, my tube and my needle down every time I do change colors. And now we're coming through with, a, with an avocado uh, green. It's a nice, like, greenish-yellow tone. It's... Kind of, kind of muted, not too bright, and this, you know, I don't want to bring too, I don't, you know, I don't want to slam too much, uh, really bright, vibrant colors in the bottom because it is, like I said, it's the, it's the bottom of the piece, and it's just, it's, it's in the background of, of the flower. I don't want it to be too drawn to, but by the eye. Definitely able to see the leaves and the stem a lot better now. Now that we introduce a little bit of those uh, warmer colors in, I'm just coming through with some more of that green concentrate right here, just to you know give it a little more shadowing under that that one petal of the leaf or of the flower. Making sure to rinse my my needle and my tube off, really nice. You know, 
drying it off and coming through with, with the lime green now. Yeah, one of, this is another one of those tones I was telling you. It doesn't really get in on the first pass. It, you know, it's harder to get in the skin, but a lot of times, it, you know, it doesn't look like it's in when it really is. So we're just going to brush it in. Don't want to, like, really force it in. So we're going to get it in there, get it back over there with the, the avocado green and, and, you know, look at it in five minutes, see if it needs another pass or, or if it is really all there. Because with the blood coming out, it, it really turns green you know, these lighter values, it's hard to see them. Now I'm layering in that, that avocado green right over that 30% and give it a nice wipe and see what it looks like. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the way it looks. I think that... uh. It does need a little bit of line work just on the bottom just to emphasize a little bit more of the shadowing, how the light's coming from the left to the right. So I'm going to come through with a five liner right now with some with some straight black. And I'm just going to run a little bit of lines here and there just mostly just, you know, just to capture a little bit of uh, more focus on just on the bottom. Just to, you know, give it, because even though we magged in that black, you know, if you run a line right over it, it it's definitely going to, Bring in a, a, a nice darker black and just to give build the shadowing and help with the light source coming from the left. That's what we're going to do. So just following through with that five liner. The, the little areas that I think need just a little bit of, you know, more under shadow. Yeah, I think that I think that's looking pretty good. I'm happy with it. I'm gonna start uh building up the rest of the dark blue behind the the orchid up on the top right side, and then we can start uh, getting getting busy on the flower itself. So I'm back in with this with the nine mag with, with the blue concentrate. Just kind of you know helping with that shadow under the flower. Don't want to go off too much. But I definitely think that if I would have just came through and uh, shaded in my uh, my stem and my leaves without putting some kind of background tone behind it, I think it, I don't think it would have given the piece the justice that it, it gets now with just a little bit of blue fading off into nothing. Turning my mag this this way and that way so I can get the different angles. I hear a lot of people say they don't like to use mags, you know, because they can't get into tight little areas, this and that. But you can see right here, I'm able to turn turn my my uh, tube this way or that way, and I'm I'm able to get in every little you know crevice or every little uh, tight spot that we can. I mean, it, it helps that I'm using a nine and not a twenty five also, but I'm able to get in there. Coming through with my middle, my mid-tone blue now, just getting right back in where we're at. And notice I, I get got into my blue and I, you know, I started getting on the skin. It wasn't really getting uh, enough exposure around the skin, so I dip back into my rinse cup and kind of loosen up the ink so I can move around, move around a little bit. Moving my hand kind of fast right here, just trying trying to build a little bit of that flow also on one side and blend it off on the edge about thirty percent so I can introduce that lighter tone right off the edge. Getting back in there with that that sky blue.
I want to keep this this part kind of light because it is the edge edge under the flower and it just kind of trails off. There it is. There, I think I think our uh, our background uh, image is, is looking really nice. Our our under uh, shadows with our with our leaves and and stem are looking pretty good. I'm just gonna add a little bit of really light blue right here just to add a little bit to this to this piece with some more direction, some more flow going through it. And then uh, when we're done, I think we'll get get up on that flower and start talking how we're gonna introduce warms and cools into the same piece. I think it's going to I think it's going to be really amazing when we're done. So I'm just coming through with the 15 still, just kind of build up a little bit of flow with that with that ice blue right here. I don't want to I don't want to make it too like bold or bright, so I'm just going to brush it in, kind of you know, dilute it down with some water and it really it's just the, the end of the piece right here, so we we definitely don't want it to 